and welcome to our hashtag live demo presentation of our prototype 2.0. My name is Zoran Georgievic, I'm the CEO of Tovar Hashnet. And before we start, I would like to introduce the team who is going to deliver this presentation today. Besides me, here is our co-founder and CTO, Josip Maricevic, uh, Igor Jankovic, who is our core developer, and Petr Novoselec, who is also working as a core developer. And we have the rest of our team with us here today, Rajan Kapusta, co-founder. Boyan Hajistevic, who is our business development manager, Marko Kucic, board member, Tadej Slavnik, our director for Tola Tesla Slovenia, and our advisor, Peter Merz. So, before we officially start with this uh, session, I would like also to thank you, our host today, Patruli Business School. This is the place where the complete project started two years ago, and we are very proud to say that now, two years after we started to work on this project, and after we presented our minimum viable product in June, this year, we are now going to present a new testnet, which is going to demonstrate that we are capable of achieving the same throughput as we did in June, but this time on 100 master nodes spread across all the continents. If you remember why we started this project with the school, is the reason that we wanted to practically emphasize the beauty of blockchain technology and to practically scale it up and make global industry and governments to use this technology. But once we started to investigate why this technology is not globally adopted, we have found that there are several shortcomings of this technology, some of them being throughput, scalability, uh, data storage and energy consumption. And today, with our cash map, we are successfully solving all these projects. So by saying that, I would like to also give a word to our core developer, Igor, who will explain you a little bit more about the technical aspects of our project before we continue with our demonstration of
and it has two hashes which link to the previous uh, direct parent and to the other parent. Uh, all the data is being spread uh, through gossip, which means that each master node randomly picks other master node and asks for all the data that they don't know yet about. So let's here is a simple example of um, of a simplified network with four master nodes. Initially, each master node only has this register uh, transaction, which is denoted here with this green, red, blue, and purple event. So here, master node A asks master node B to to get all the events that he doesn't know yet about. Master node B sends everything he knows about, which is current here just one event. And this is denoted with, with the link from, from B to A. And to, as, the, as the gossip is going, uh, going on, each of this representation of the graph... Um, I'm mic. Okay, yeah, this is better. So, through the process of gossip, each of the master nodes gets growing the uh, the the, the director is graph which holds all the data about how how data was being spread through the network. Um, so let's see, for example, this master node C, its representation of the of the current state. If we take a look on this event 17, and if we take a look on master node D's event 17, it's um, everything that happened before is exactly the same for both ma for both master node. C and, and master node D. And this is because of all the connections between vertices are hash pointers. And it's it's cryptographically secure that nothing has changed and that everything is the same. And this property is called consistency of the hash nets. So we'll need to define a few more properties in order to get to the eventual consensus phase. We have something called sentinels, and all of these events that are denoted with yellow circles, here are sentinels. But in order to get to get the definition of sentinel, we first need to, to define a few other things. For example, direct path, <coughs> which is um, which basically if, if you traverse through the graph and there is a path uh, from some event to the other, this is called direct path. For example, on this, uh, on this image, there is a direct path from event 2 uh, to event 6. Or, for example, here, from event 7, there is a direct path to event 10. You can either go through the event 9, or you can go directly from 7 to 10. With that, we can define a hyperpath. For example, this blue event number 2 has a hyperpath to event 11. And what this means is that as you traverse the hash net, you collect all the stake of each master node that you haven't yet visited and you add it to your internal state of how much stake you collected. And if you collect more than two-thirds of the current money supply in the, in the net, uh, you have a hyperpad. So, for example, from 2 to 11, you have a hyperpad because you collected master node A, B and C's stakes, which are 3, 1 and 1 respectively, which is, if you sum it up, 5, and the current money supply in the network is 6, 5 sixths is more than 2 thirds, and this means you have a hyperpad. Now we can define also what, what a round is in this data structure. If an event has a hyperpad to the hypermajority of the previous round sentinels, then a new round has happened. For example, here with the green is noted that Sentinel-1 has a hyperpad to event 11 and its stake will be considered on whether a new round has happened. Similarly for Sentinel-2, which is this blue event, there is also a hyperpad. Sentinel-3 also has a hyperpad. Sentinel-4, for example, doesn't have, because you cannot get to the event 11 through, the, through this uh, hash net and then its stake is not considered. But since all the, all the here denoted with the green color states are, do have a hyperpad to the event 11, then we can vote that um, the event 11 has a new round. And this is round 2, as stated here on the image. Uh, and with this, we can define what 
what Sentinel is, a simplified definition would be that the first event it has a bigger round than the, than the previous event in the linear history of a mass tunnel, it, it's a Sentinel. Or a more complicated, complex definition would be if, if an event has a hydro path to the hyper majority of previous round Sentinels, it's a Sentinel. For example, this event 15 is a Sentinel. Uh, another thing that we need, this is the final step before consensus, we define some Sentinels to be wardens. And what this means is this is even a more restrictive definition for a Sentinel. For example, we want to decide that this event 11 is a warden. What we'll do here is that each Sentinel from the next round will vote whether whether there is a direct path from this Sentinel from the next round to the previous one. Oops. Well, let me go back here. Okay. And if there is, a yes vote will be cast. Otherwise, a no vote will be cast. And now the further round, which is round 4 in this case, Sentinel for this round will collect all the votes from the previous round. And if there is just a normal majority, which is half, and if it's more, more than half of yes votes, votes, which in this case it is, then the event 11 will be voted as a warden. And once we have all the wardens for some round, we can uh, start uh, and calculate the consensus timestamp for each event. And how is this being calculated? You, you take some warden from some round, and you see if there is a direct path to some event. If there is, you take the first event, event's timestamp, which is the first ascendant of the warden and the first descendant of that event, and you add it to some array. And you do this for all the wardens to, towards that event. You sort these timestamps, and the median timestamp is the timestamp for the events. And since all the hash nets are consistent, it's guaranteed that every, every master node will come up with the same calculated consensus timestamp. And for, the, for more uh, information, you can also read the white paper on the web page. And with this, once we have the consensus timestamp for each event, meaning that we also have the consensus timestamp for each transaction in the event, we can order these transactions and put them into a list blockchain-like structure. And with this, uh, we can have interoperability with other blockchains, and we can also deploy the Ethereum virtual machine on top of our transaction layer, and then you'll be able to deploy DApps and, I don't know, call uh, smart contract uh, methods or whatever. Um, and with this, I'd like to give it to Jos. So, hello everybody. As Zoran said, I'm Josip Maricic, CTO and co-founder of Dollar. And now, after all this talk, it's uh, time for a live demo. So I'll go on one of the nodes actually, as I'll remain seated here behind the computer. The point of creating uh, this uh, bigger network of uh, 100 nodes is to do multiple tests, both regarding the algorithm correctness, scaling and stability. You all remember uh, that we did the test in June with 11 master nodes, and uh, while we found out that our concept works, uh, it correctly rejects incorrectness actions, accepts uh, quantum consensus and all the other ones. Uh, when we started scaling up, we immediately saw some problems. Uh, you can do the code reviews hundreds of times, you can do the performance tests, you can do the logic tests, but uh, some of the things you do not discover until you really start scaling up in a real environment. But anyway, the point is uh, that when we started preparing for this test, we came across multiple problems, but at uh, some point they are not so bad because they are not the problem in concepts, mostly the way it was developed. So everything, uh, we were able to solve everything, and uh, today we can proudly present you the 
testnet that uh, we created uh, during the last few weeks. So uh, here on my left side, you'll be able to actually see the user interface, graphical interface that's aggregating the data from the nodes. And for all the hardware techies and so on, uh, you can see the actual uh, log output of one of the nodes, where you can see the events that are happening, the number of thread, timestamp of event. You can maybe see later uh, the sync events, uh, timer events, event caches of the events that are being created, and so on. So, uh, regarding the nodes itself, this time uh, the whole test is run on Microsoft Azure. We have uh, exactly 100 nodes uh, that are split in five regions. We have it in the West US, East US, West Europe, West India, and Southeast Asia. So, we have pretty much covered the bigger parts of the, uh, that Microsoft is covering this time. Also, regarding this, the question we get asked a lot is uh, is the network problem? Is the bandwidth problem, is latency problem, especially on this? Uh, as you maybe can even see from here, uh, at this point in time, the uh, problem is mostly CPU. So, uh, because of this virtual voting that uh, Igor mentioned, uh, it's generally maybe still not so optimized, so uh, we cannot process the data as fast enough as the network can actually process it. So uh, we will not go to optimization phase until we finish all the concepts to prove the virtual machine works and so on. But yeah, of course, at some point in time, when it comes to this, then we'll get and start optimizing the calculations and then see what is the actual maximum truth. Uh, so, we have a network here that's been running in real time. It's been reset somewhere like 15 minutes before, the, before the, uh, this test. Uh, here you can see the summary of all events. For example, you see the total transactions since the network was last reset was 151 million. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can really see it on here on the projector. And uh, so that's, that's basically it. Uh, the also, last time we did uh, the demo on different providers that are not connected like virtual networks. Microsoft has a really good connection between all their centers. Last time we used Hetzner, DigitalOcean, and so on. Once again, a network was not the problem. The current problem is CPU, and that will be optimized at some point later on. Now, regarding all the questions, we'll do them at the end of this presentation. As you can see in this, uh, in this, like I think it's uh, 30 minutes now, even more, 40 minutes that the network has been running since its last reset. Uh, the maximum burst at some point was 154 transactions, and currently it's dancing around here, 70,000. 32,000, 39,85, and so on. So, by the nature of this algorithm, uh, this is the peak that can happen, you know, because uh, the nodes sync multiple events, and then it processes them, and then at uh, some point it can slow down, but then process all of them at one point in the real So that's why we get these peaks. And now, on how this can actually be used in practice, Mr. Tales Lakin, that is the director of Tolar Cash in Slovenia. Thank you, Josip. I will uh, try to uh, show how we think that uh, Tolar Cash Net can, can really influence on the field of achieving sustainable development goals defined by the United Nations. Uh, we see the potential of the distributed uh, ledger technologies uh, going from the you know, centralized, decentralized now to the distributed economy and we strongly believe yes, that uh, using this technology is of course should be done on the field of achieving these 17 uh, development goals. How uh, particularly uh, Tolar uh, Hashnet is doing that? First one 
uh, really important is that it's a, it's a technology uh, which don't use the electricity like a current uh, uh, blockchain. We know current blockchains, they have proof, proof of work uh, concept of uh, the, making the transactions really using a lot of electricity and that's why we strongly believe that going on the new protocol uh, proof of stake in dollar hash net, we are really answering this uh, crucial question how this technology will be sustainable in the long term. Uh, of course, then it's uh, speed and it's scalability uh, to be used then on the different fields. It's really uh, uh, important that it's, uh, of course, uh, quite scalable and fast enough. Uh, we uh, have a few particular uh, uh, sustainable development goals for the, the, uh, on the field of sustainable uh, uh, cities, on the field of responsible consumption, on the field of climate action, we see a big potential of dollar cash net, on the field of, of course, industri industry and innovation, and on the end, of course, uh, with using the, the, the technology, we will definitely impact a lot on the, uh, reducing the inequalities uh, in the global scale. What uh, we see that on the market of European Union, uh, uh, dollar hash net have the potential, of course, that it uh, can provide a kind of basic distributed ledger infrastructure of Europe. I will remind you again that on 10 of April, on the European Digital Day, uh, 22 member states signed a declaration uh, to form European partnership among the European member states to start build the infrastructure, the blockchain infrastructure for Europe. Uh, Toral Hashnet is one of the most progressive kind of uh, technologies that will already be able to answer uh, how this infrastructure will be developed. Uh, we also presented uh, Toral Hashnet on the level of the United Nations. Here you can see a picture from the first workshop organized by the United Nations uh, in uh, New York this year, uh, showing the potential of uh, blockchain technologies, but also total hash net at achieving SDGs on a global scale. And uh, just last week, uh, we were part of the first OECD uh, policy forum on blockchain uh, held in Paris, where again uh, we presented uh, total hash net one of really progressive distributed ledger technologies uh, to be used not just by the businesses but, but also the governments. We know that use cases are in the field of public and private. Thank you for your attention. And now we have our legal advisor, Mr. Peter Merritt. Thank you. Uh, Peter Merritt proud legal advisor of Tower Hashnet project. Uh, we are witnessing some tough uh, times on the, on the crypto markets. Uh, everything is bleeding. Uh, it's quite depressive. But that's, that's also maybe positive because, because good projects, project, projects with, uh, with a long-term vision, with, with amazing team, uh, will continue developing their, uh, their, their projects, will continue following their mission and of course on the other side uh, projects with, with not such a long a long term vision with no with no clear uh, miles, milestones will slowly evaporate from, from the market. So I've been advising him uh, for now for, for, for in 12 successful ICO projects and I can tell you that, that this project is by far most sophisticated with, with the best uh, possible team. Uh, so I hope, I'm sure that, that my number 13 uh, will, be, will be my happy number. Uh, so we, we, we already heard that blockchain technology has some, some, some flaws, the, the outstanding algorithms, uh, they do have some flaws. On the other side, blockchain technology is, 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 is really disruptive. It will have major impacts on the private sector, the public sector. And uh, three of the three of the, the most problematic aspects of, of, of the outstanding blockchain technology, already mentioned by, by the day, uh, scalability, uh, speed, and energy consumption. Uh, these are all taken account with with this dollar hash project. So 
what Tor hashtag, hashtag is doing, what the, what's the added value, the, the most important comparative advantage, is that they are taking the best parts of blockchain technology and they are improving what should be improved. So I am sure there is a bright uh, future for, 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 for the project uh, ahead. And uh, what, what, what I also see is that, that um, we all know what is future. future future of blockchain and decentralized economy, with decentralized apps, uh, what is coming now are, are tokenized, uh, tokenized securities, tokenized uh, uh, intellectual property rights, so the tokenized economy with, with smart contract, and I am very positive that Tor Hashnet will be playing uh, a vital, fundamental part, it will be a, a fundamental pillar of future decentralized economy. Thank you. Okay, basically that's it uh, as for the presentations. So now we come to the interesting part. Uh, you can now ask us all the questions you want. It can be regarding the, the test network, uh, the algorithms itself, uh, the business plans, whatever you want. So uh, we'll also be taking questions from Telegram group. So as soon as some question appears, We'll try to answer it. Yeah, well, what are the storage requirements for uh, storing the state of the data in time and putting it into the blockchain like structure? How far does it go? What are the storage requirements for that? Uh, okay, here I'll give the mic to Igor if you explain it better. Can I give it to Vedran? No. <laughs> So currently, we tested with, uh, with instances that have a 16 gigabytes of RAM, right? Yes. So on, on that kind of uh, instance it will work. And as I said, we do prune the graph. So you only need to have up to around 10 rounds in the graph. And uh, then we can delete the older parts and keep those in the working memory, right? But Still, you, we do save everything uh, on, on some other uh, more persistent place, right? That are, that's not being used immediately on the algorithm. So if somebody needs to verify the whole history, they can do that as well, right? Yeah, yeah I would just like to add this, for example. Uh, so currently we're uh, having 10 rounds of transactions. Uh, if, if you have like last 10 rounds, as Igor explained, uh, basically anything behind that you do not need to keep for all the nodes that are in sync because that's maximum needed to achieve consensus. But however, some node might be, I don't know, somebody just started a new node or if, uh, his node has not been up in a year. So he'll need to get grab all the history. And uh, that's why even the full version is, of course, kept on all the nodes. But of course, as he said, uh, then uh, we just need the orders of events, uh, which we can put in like a linear list, and even then optimize if like the same outputs are spent multiple times, uh, we can just uh, keep the last state. That's also helping optimize the storage requirements. So that we hear you well, but uh, the people on my screen. Thank you. So I want to ask at what the latency for transactions actually is, as opposed to throughput. So how long does it take from a transaction being submitted to the network to it actually being confirmed? Uh, so by confirmed, uh, if you mean that it's irreversible, right? Yes. Yeah. So that that's been agreed on by by the network. Yeah, so uh, on the smaller network uh, that we had, like with these 11 nodes, uh, where uh, that was all the nodes it needed, the maximum time, like in the worst case, it was 3 seconds of finality. Uh, here it's a little bigger, but uh, anyway, at some, uh, at some calculations, uh, it will never be bigger than 5 seconds. On average, it should be between 3 and 5 seconds to finality. However, in some cases, uh, it might be up to seven seconds. But so that's that are the worst case scenarios.
Okay, let me check uh, the telegram if there is anything here. Uh, so somebody on telegram asked uh, when is the working network plan? So if uh, he's thinking about the testnet, yes, uh, we will also release the public testnet uh, to public in uh, somewhere at the start of 2019 and also the plan to release the mainnet is in the second quarter of 2018. Some of this might happen even sooner. We now have some several of our internal test nets for developers for different stages and different kinds of tests. And at some point, of course, we will release it when, when you see it's ready. Okay, this is more of a comment. Tola, it is two years hodl type of project. Well, yeah, uh, not sure what to say to that. Anybody from the audience? Uh, why are you better than other projects? 
straightforward question. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's really a generic question, you know, so uh, uh, why are we better than uh, maybe proof of work projects? Tade mentioned it uh, himself, uh, you know, the, you can see that Bitcoin is now using up more electricity than 159 countries in the world, and that is just Bitcoin, you know, not counting the Ethereum, Zcash and so on. It is clear that this kind of state is not sustainable. Then the second thing is, of course, the, the thing we always say, uh, like 90% of the projects have really low throughput. You know, Ethereum has around 19 max transactions per second in best case. Uh, Bitcoin now with uh, Segwit has around 7. This is not 10 times more, it not, uh, it's 1000 times more. You know? So this is the second thing and maybe also the thing that uh, he meant is uh, the ones that they compare as the most is Hedgegraph Federa. So uh, there the throughput is similar to ours, so, so we are not beating them there. But uh, the point is for everybody who's been watching the space, they will have 39 nodes that will have all the decision power, all the voting power. So both the consensus voting and the decision making voting. And those 39 nodes will go out to the people, actually organizations of their own choosing. While uh, we're aiming to give that power to the people who actually use our network. So anywhere, anyone who gets an Aptoros will be able to run a master node. And if we will not have like 10 or 20 master nodes, we will be able to have hundreds or even maybe thousands of master nodes. Okay, questions are popping up on the screen. Can you say something about the cases for Tor? Yeah, actually we have a, a lot of cases, we even have here, maybe Mario would like to say a few words more. Sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, so basically I, I think that we try to do all the cases where we see that the Tor technology is the most important. So the number of transactions and easy to use and uh, now we have a couple of uh, cases in the government. We also have a couple of the cases in the industry, uh, for example, supply chain management, where we try to put uh, this technology to work, where to help the industries to do the better work with blockchain, and it's really interesting and new idea for the industries. And we also basically have a couple of uh, different government projects where we are trying to emphasize the use of uh, blockchain which will help us, you know, drive this uh, data transparency and connecting of the other companies very easily. And I think the most important part here is that ease of use, this is one thing, and the other is definitely the speed that we have for the system. Thank you.